we have the widest no? uh, geographical coverage. Widest geographical coverage. Uh, we are in nine locations, no? uh, and that includes uh, that that covers uh, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. No? And 96% uh, of our uh, portfolio would be located in Metro Manila, and uh, around 6% uh, in growth in growth centers uh, in the provinces. Uh, we also have the longest uh, land lease tenure of up to 99 years. No? Oh. Uh, so that, yeah, 99 years. And uh, at, on, on the average across all properties, it's about 89 years. So that gives you assurance no, that we're in this from the long term and definitely predictability. Hi everyone, we are in again for a very special treat. We have the CEO and President of Robinson's Land Commercial REIT, Jericho Go, joining us in the podcast as we do a deep dive on this very, very interesting listing that's happening in the next few days. So Jericho, it's an honor to have you. Uh, thank you for joining us. The honor is mine. I mean, uh, you're the ultimate guru no? when it comes to investing and uh, I, I heard a lot of good good things about you and uh, what people have been saying and uh, if you've not uh, made it to Marvin Germo's show <laughs> you've not made it at all so I'm glad I'm here I'm thinking no na yeah, just to hear that but <laughs> thank you so much for uh, the kind words um, and as always the goal of this channel is just to give as much value for people to be able to make the right decisions on their investments. So that being said, let's give people value. And I want to know, no, and I'm so curious about this. Can you tell us more about Robinson's Land Commercial REIT, its backstory, and why is this happening right now, August 2021? I think we're all familiar in the man, no, that uh, the REIT law was passed almost 12 years ago. Hmm. It's quite some time already. You know? And uh, I think uh, during that time, uh, certain regulations or certain uh, uh, things were really not put in place uh, appropriately to encourage uh, a lot of the big developers to really dive into it. No? But uh, of course, uh, in the recent past, I think uh, the things that needed to be put in place, no, I mean, uh, have been put in place. So uh, I think that really opened the doors no, for, for developers to consider uh, uh, putting up this, this street vehicle. No? So for, for us, I think uh, what is really important no, for our CR uh, and our sponsor, RLC, you know, the Filipinos work so hard. No? Uh, I remembered reading this book, no? Rich Dad, Poor Dad, by mm -hmm. Robert Kiyosaki. And uh, he was saying that uh, uh, Rich Dad, uh, sorry, it's a Poor Dad actually works to, to make money. No? And then Rich Dad makes money work for him. So, uh, you know, a lot of us Filipinos, we work so hard for our families and uh, just to find out that, uh, you know, later on we've spent most of it already and really not invested properly and well. So for us, I think it's also creating the awareness no? mm. that uh, you have opportunities, uh, whether big or small, uh, in, in terms of savings that you, you might be able to really make money out of uh, uh, you know, your investment is particularly in the REIT. No? And, and the beauty about this used to be uh, we always look at the conglomerates no, or the big uh, uh, companies, no, the developers, and say, wow, look at those buildings. No? Look at those buildings. Look at those infrastructure developments. They must be making so much money. I wish I had that much money to put up a building. No? And uh, so we always say, well, now there's this REIT. No? I mean, so what's stopping you? Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you don't really have to have billions of pesos to be able to take part of that action. Uh, just uh, a few uh, hundreds or thousands of shares uh, would be sufficient no, for you to be able to take part in the in the earnings no, in, in particular. So it's like you're becoming a landlord uh, mm -hmm. of, of some sort, you know, and being able to partake of that. But the beauty here is minus all of the headaches no, of uh, having to raise the capital to put up a very huge uh, building or uh, a, a very huge investment. No? And um, at the same time, uh, you don't have to worry about managing the day-to-day -day operations. You don't have to worry about the headaches or the challenges of maintaining the property itself. It is important for people to understand that proceeds no, that to, uh, will be gained from, from the REIT by, uh, by RCR will have to be reinvested 100% into the Philippines, into the country. No? So more projects means 
creating more jobs. Mm-hmm. So why now? Because I think this is the perfect time that we can do our share in nation building, creating those job oppor- opportunities for our fellow Filipinos no, that uh, have lost their jobs. I like what you said that it gives Filipinos the ability also to create opportunities for others, which is uh, very, I think, very, very uh, noble and something that's uh, very, very good. But I, I want to do a deep dive, especially for those who have not experienced REIT investing. Um, what do you think is the biggest advantage of REITs are right now, especially for people? There's there's so much investments out there, bonds, yes, yes. buy yes. direct stocks, you can enter um, mutual funds. For people who don't understand this yet, um, what do you think they should realize that, okay, I'll invest in REITs because I can get this from it as well as an, as an investor? Office buildings, uh, uh, you obviously... When you're leasing out spaces there, uh, you you sign up uh, a lot of these tenants, no? And these tenants have fixed term contracts, no? Can be anywhere from three years, five years, or ten years. So in essence, you are guaranteed already a steady income stream, you know, from from all of these uh, tenants of yours. It also being a stock, uh, there can potentially be also stock appreciation, appreciation in the price. No? So uh, if you at some point when it's already gained a certain um, increase in terms of the stock price, uh, you can also capitalize uh, on that gain by selling the stock. Keep in mind that these leases have escalation funds, no? uh, as uh, as it usually is, no? uh, three to five percent uh, annual rental escalation. So that again um, gives you a plus no? when it comes to uh, whatever. Uh, yield that you're already entitled to receive, then there's this three, three to five percent annual bump, uh, depending on the contrast that uh, you've, you've been able to sign up. At the same time, uh, you you also have this opportunity to grow, no? uh, to grow the REIT uh, through uh, third-party acquisitions or through asset infusions by the sponsor. So in in those cases, I think uh, there is also that advantage again. That uh, in the case of RCR, <clears throat> we mentioned that uh, there are roughly about um, 422,000 square meters no, of uh, uh, available space that can be infused uh, into the REIT vehicle or RCR no, that already has initially 425,000 square meters. And uh, it's it's basically a mix of existing projects and it's also um, uh, what you have in terms of BPOs inside malls, and uh, at the same time, uh, in terms of uh, existing projects that are about to be completed in the near term. Can people know what are the other buildings and how how good the quality of these buildings are as well? Uh, maybe just to step back a bit, uh, Marvin, no? just to mm-hmm. also uh, mention some key takeaways for RCR. Uh, number one, we are the uh, you know we are poised to be the largest. Uh, REIT in the Philippines no? mm-hmm. in terms of uh, market capitalization. No? So that is uh, 64.2 billion pesos based on our uh, uh, price, no? share price, which is uh, 6.45 pesos per share. No? So we're the largest. And, and we know for a fact that uh, a large market cap uh, ensures uh, liquidity. No? So that is quite key. Uh, the second is uh, we are also the biggest uh, in terms of uh, asset portfolio size. Uh, so that's about uh, 425,000 square meters, 14 assets. Uh, and these are assets are high quality assets, all PESA registered. So primarily catering to uh, the ITBPO or ITBPM market, right, our clients. And then the third is that uh, we have the widest uh, uh, geographical coverage. Why this geographical coverage? Uh, we are in nine locations, no? uh, and that includes uh, that that covers uh, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. No? And uh, 96% of our uh, portfolio would be located in Metro Manila, and uh, around 6% uh, in growth in growth centers uh, in the provinces. Uh, we also have the longest uh, land lease tenure of up to 99 years. No? Oh. Uh, so that yeah, 99 years, and uh, on, on the average across all properties, it's about 89 years. So that gives you assurance, no, that we're in this from the long term, and definitely predictability. And earlier we already talked about uh, 
uh, the growth uh, possibilities no, through our uh, excellent expansion pipeline. We have a presence uh, in RSC, so that's part of the portfolio that is a uh, Robinson Summit Center in Makati. We also have in Fort Bonifacio, which is uh, our Sigma uh, building, Cyber Sigma. Mm. And then we also have uh, several no, in the Ortigas uh, Central Business District. No? So we have Alpha and Beta and uh, Robinson's, Robinson's Equitable Tower. Uh, then, of course, uh, Bridgetown, uh, we have uh, Exa Zeta and the Terra Towers. Uh, and I wanted to mention a little bit more about uh, those towers because these buildings are LEED accredited. No? So, uh, or it stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. So, we are already seeing the future, you know, this, the future of uh, when it comes to sustainability, you know, being able to reduce our carbon footprint. It does not only benefit the environment, but uh, being lead accredited also, according to the U.S. Green Building Council, uh, will help the tenants no, save on electric, electricity costs up to 25% and the water utilization by 12%, reduction in, in, in uh, water consumption by 12%. So these are the kind of things that uh, are, are part of our portfolio in Parsiar. What was the logic in the selection of those buildings? What was the strategy behind uh, picking that for this particular offering? First, we want to be in the central business districts of Makati, Ortigas, and Fort Bonifacio. And then we the, the properties that we also have, particularly in Mandaluyong um, and also in Bridgetown, uh, these are what we refer to as transit oriented developments. No? Uh, Bridgetown is even called a uh, destination estate. No? So it's live, work, play, inspire. So it's really a complete uh, mixed-use integrated uh, community. So um, the logic is that we want to be able to assure you know, our tenants that uh, wherever they need to be, uh, we will have availability for them there. Because I don't know if <clears throat> a lot of people have really talked about it, but uh, I've been very much in touch with a lot of these BPO tenants. No? I've been doing it for over 20 years already. Wow. And uh, they told us, you know, oftentimes our decision where to locate is dictated by our tenants. By our tenants, no? the BPO companies, right? So because uh, they basically uh, outsource to the Philippines. No? So whether you're in the hospitality business, airline business, uh, whether you are in, uh, <clears throat> uh, in in so many other no, in credit card uh, and all of those things. So they would say, I want to be in Makati, I want to be in Ortigas, I want to be in Fort Bonifacio, I want to be in this transit-oriented development, I want to be in a destination state. So so we need to be ready with that menu eh? uh, so that we, we don't lose interest and we don't lose the opportunity to um, accommodate their growth requirements. No? And that's why this has also given birth to uh, the concept of hub and spoke. Hub and spoke, no? meaning uh, they set up their main operations, their headquarters, their main center in Metro Manila. And then at some point, they expand into the provinces no? where labor is cheaper, uh, where there is probably uh, greater availability in terms of specific uh, industries that they want to tap. Given that you're listing this number for your initial launch, do you plan to, to add some more? Or, or what will be the strategy behind um, adding more assets? Will be will there be a, a period of time before you add some more? Or you will be aggressive into adding uh, new buildings into the mix? Yeah, right now, uh, Marvin, we mentioned no, that uh, there is uh, an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, between RCR and mm-hmm. RLC. Mm-hmm. And that is to infuse uh, one to two assets wow. uh, annually. So that's about 40,000 to about 100,000 square meters. And um, we, ha- we definitely want to make sure that uh, uh, our commitment uh, to grow RCR, because uh, our aspiration is we want RCR to be the bellwether no? when it comes to Philippine REITs. So that's why all this. Uh, 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 things that we mentioned earlier being the largest, the biggest, the widest, the longest, and having this excellent expansion pipeline uh, mm-hmm. are key no? in order to grow 
uh, RCR. You mentioned about your your lease on land, no? But what I want to talk about is um, your tenants. Number one, how long are their average leases? Um, your occupancy rate, and then your uh, tenant mix. And the rationale behind the tenant mix is, uh, I've seen a lot of people become so excited when it's majority um a large chunk of the mix is bpo vis-a-vis versus pogo uh, roughly about 70% no, are into the it bpm or bpo uh, uh, sector and then uh, about uh, 19% uh, or close to 20% uh, would be in terms of uh, the traditional or the corporates no? mm. and then uh, the balance uh, would be uh, Uh, you know, the, the flexible uh, workspaces and things like that. Our exposure to Pogo is less than 3%. So something I think that we wanted to emphasize. No? And we are biased in terms of the BPO sector because uh, for one, um, they really create uh, employment no, for, for us Filipinos, right? And, and a, a lot of people probably are not completely aware, but once uh, our BPO workers start going back to work, coming back to the workspaces or the their offices, it creates uh, a five times multiplier effect. So when you talk about wanting to restart the economy, this is the way to go. Because the moment that uh, people uh, start to come back to work, then they give jobs to the transport providers, no? taxi drivers, uh, those uh, point-to-point shuttle services. At the same time, the food vendors are happy. Finally, their customers are back, and uh, the retailers, no, the ones that you know, in the clothing business and things like that. So that is also uh, starting to come back, no. And then, of course, health workers. You know, when you know, talk about pre-employment, medical checkups, and, th- and things like that, that's an added uh, bonus. Uh, and last, uh, we could probably also see that um, housing, those that are renting apartments, so, so that they can be closer to where they work and things like that. So. It is very essential, really, you know, that uh, um, how we are contributing to help people uh, get back to work is that uh, we are supporting uh, their efforts in terms of vaccination. Uh, in our uh, company alone, uh, more than 90% of our employees no, at RLC, the sponsor, have already been vaccinated. So in, in a way, we have some form of like micro herd immunity, you know? Uh, going back into the offices. So this is something that we also want for our tenants to be able to achieve over 90% in terms of occupancy, uh, much, much uh, uh, closer to 100%. Wow. Uh, uh, because again, we have this very good relationship with our tenants. We, we make sure that uh, we understand their business. And earlier, I, I did talk about, you know, hub and spoke. Uh, being present in multiple locations where if they need to expand and they need to be able to uh, adhere to the requirements of their clients, we, we are there, no? we are available and we're, we're going to make sure that uh, uh, their growth plans, they remain with us, right? How long are their leases, um, the, at least average of all of those? Normally, um, it's about five years. Mm-hmm. Normally, it's about five years. And, uh, and the reason behind that is This is another beauty no? uh, in, in partnering with BPO companies. They, they actually make very substantial amounts of investments into the lease premises. Because uh, you know, in terms of uh, the, stru- the structured cabling, the data center, the fit out, uh, all of that, you know, they really invest heavily because they need to make sure that certain things are, are, uh, are addressed, no? particularly data privacy, And uh, also the you know internet connectivity, the power uninterrupted, uninterrupted power supply into their lease premises uh, to be able to continue to service their, their clients abroad, no? mostly North America and Europe and some parts of Asia. So, uh, so the, the, all of these things are very important, no? so and not to be taken for granted. People are interested about the dividends, and at the end of the day, me yes. personally, I'm. Yes. I'm in it actually for the dividends. I would tell people that the amazing thing about REITs is you buy it, you hold it, it even if there's volatility, as long as they're giving you dividends, regardless of what their iterations are when they want to give it out, 
you you still get paid and they will beat bank so uh what can you share that's allowed um regarding yes. as well for our 2022 uh, forecast or projection we are looking at a 5.96 percent yield uh in terms of uh yeah the, the REIT. if you would want to leave three key points on what robinson's land commercial REIT is what would it be so first uh, when we talk about uh, the filipino um we uh, realize that they work so hard uh, to earn a living and we want to make sure that uh, we are here to give them this opportunity no uh, to put that hard earned money into income generating assets no uh, to uh, cash dividends that they can receive uh, we are committed uh, to make sure that we invest this no uh, into the uh, economy through the projects that we've mentioned and more importantly i think uh, um there is a higher purpose in terms of the things that we do and uh for one i think on the social aspect no uh, in in terms of uh, uh community building no in helping uh, uh the filipino uh, family as a whole um by bringing developments outside of metro manila by creating projects outside of metro manila and even the projects that we create in, in metro manila we are this, there's this what we refer to as reverse migration, no? where the Filipinos that have left the country come back. We have good paying jobs here, BPO. And those that are in the provinces that are wanting to get into Metro Manila, stay there. We will bring the projects, we will bring the developments to you so that you will not be separated from your family. So uh, we believe that a day will come to these efforts that we are undertaking together. No? Uh, our company and together with the uh, with the nation no? to create those job opportunities so that uh, one day uh, no mother father brother or sister will ever have to leave home anymore and uh, that has a big social impact now when when family members uh, ha have left because they had to work abroad uh, something is missing in the family so we want to keep the family together and lastly in terms of uh, the nation uh, in terms of the country, uh, the job generation. Uh, a lot of people have really lost their jobs. Uh, it's about time that uh, uh, we do something about it. So we are not uh, uh, going to shy away from our duty and our responsibility as a company uh, in creating those jobs you know, through the projects that we put in place. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, everything that we'll do uh, will add value, not, not just uh, in, in terms of the bottom line, no? but uh, to the lives of each and every Filipino. I'm curious, no, because there's still a big um, move also right now about work from home. Um, there's a big move also on, uh, because of the pandemic, a lot of buildings are some, a lot of at least, of some, not a lot, but there are offices that are trying to shift into that model. Um, does this impact the demand for the buildings even post-pandemic? Or you think because it's, uh, primarily based on BPOs, it will be very, very resilient as well. The BPO sector, uh, uh, very fortunate that uh, the government uh, basically labeled it as uh, essential services, They're therefore allowed to operate even during uh, uh, quarantine, uh, heightened restrictions. We, we believe that this is temporary. So this is something that uh, will be corrected in time. Uh, maybe just to put things in perspective, no? um, it was possible to do work from home because the volume all over the world has really gone down dramatically. So because of that, uh, it, it is more acceptable no? if there will be uh, certain disruptions in terms of power outages, in terms of uh, internet, uh, internet being disconnected. Uh, but when volume goes up, then you will have to also step up your game. No? So your ability to address inquiries or to answer uh, questions or uh, to respond to clients' uh, uh, requirements will now be put to task. And it will no, no longer be possible for you to say, hi, uh, I'm sorry, I, I've had some internet uh, uh, issues and uh, power uh, interruption. Um, so eventually, I think people will really have to go back to the workplace. When companies come to the Philippines, they outsource. Um, they outsource because of the quality of our labor. So the quality of our labor is basically determined 
by the culture that is established within the company. So that culture will have to be harnessed through face-to-face interaction. So that's the only way that you can build trust and confidence. Eh? So I think it's a no-brainer. I mean, being able to go back to the workplace, being able to um, to get together and to plan is is more productive no? than uh, being uh, you know have to stay and, and work from home. So we strongly believe that uh, the way to really move forward is to uh, ensure that vaccination is being uh, done. And I think uh, certain uh, LGUs have already achieved uh, some form of uh, herd immunity. Uh, San Juan, I think, mentioned that. Uh, here in Maritina, I think uh, uh, that is the case as well. So uh, there are ways that we can go back, Not maybe not the normal normal, but in our offices, we've put in place uh, a lot of health and safety protocols. Like when you enter the buildings, of course, there's the normal foot back. But at the same time, we have uh, invested in terms of hybrid uh, metal detectors with thermal scanners. Uh, and then when you enter, you have automatic alcohol dispensers. And then when, when you touch uh, surfaces like buttons, elevator buttons, we cover them with copper films uh, so that, uh, you know, to prevent the virus from really staying on in those surfaces. And then also uh, when you go to uh, our toilets, we're starting to work with also automatic soap dispensers uh, and as much as possible, the uh, automatic uh, faucets no, that are, uh, so you don't have to touch those surfaces. No? So I think uh, that is a very important thing. And the other, the other thing that uh, we have been very active in doing is ensuring that uh, we have good uh, air flow rate, the ex- air exchange within our uh, offices so that uh, the virus will not uh, stay within the premises. They will be uh, sort of like circulated and brought out of the lease premises. So that, that is key. So there are ways to, to manage uh, health and safety protocols uh, to put them in place to secure and to help uh, have a healthy and uh, secure work environment. No? So I think moving forward, that is how we can address the worries of people and bring them back to the workspaces. For sure, you'll be raising money from uh, the listing. Um, and people would be interested to know uh, where would the proceeds go as well so that at least they have an, they have direction also on, on what's happening with the money, what's happening with our investments as well. So for us, we're looking at, uh, among others, um, being able to put that into logistic centers, uh, offices, uh, in terms of uh, destination estates, residential projects. No? When, when that happens, it will really create uh, a lot of uh, jobs, no? a lot of opportunities for people to get employed and to get all of us back on our feet. Mr. Jericho Go, before I let you go, I want to end with something very inspirational. Um, do you have any words of encouragement for Filipinos right now that are having a tough time financially? Uh, if you were in their shoes right now, uh, what would you do uh, to take yourself out of a financial rut? Very heavy question. <laughs> no, well, again, there is no uh, um, single formula uh, for you to, to be able to do that. I mean, uh, everything always has, you have to take baby steps uh, in order to achieve your goal. Uh, but you have to start somewhere. So I, I think uh, we are now looking at a very unique opportunity in the REIT. Uh, and you're talking about uh, 1,000 shares. You're talking about 6.45 pesos per share. So 6,450 pesos, right? Uh, and then you're already uh, a shareholder uh, of RCR. Um, so I think when you look at this, uh, think about the opportunity, get yourself started, and uh, pretty soon, um, when all of the things start coming in, no? I mean, your cash dividends are coming in, you realize that, uh, you know, definitely um, this is something that uh, um, is very helpful uh, for me. And uh, this has taught me a certain discipline. And then from there, uh, hopefully you'll be on to bigger things. No? Uh, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So oh. I think that that is important. And at the same time, uh, for those that are really not very familiar uh, in terms of uh, what uh, good or right investing is all about, 
Um, I remembered I was listening to a homily uh, at mass, and uh, the priest was saying, "Be the light, be the light to the world." So, what are the characteristics of light? Light, when you look at it, it blinds you, right? It blinds you. So, the person who is trying to be the light should not be the focus of your attention, but rather what that person teaches you and the examples that they uh, show you light the path, light your way. So I guess the message is be the light to our fellow Filipinos who are not fully aware. That's why Marvin, I, I, I salute you. Hats off to what you're doing. Uh, this is uh, definitely a uh, labor of love. <laughs> you are doing a big service to the Filipinos. You are you are helping each and every one realize what uh, potential can be, how to get started, where to go, what are the opportunities out there, opening up their eyes and uh, making sure that they are making the most of their hard earned money. I like what you said when you computed it, six thousand plus. It's cheaper than a cell phone, and I'll push it even further, guys. When you get the dividends, reinvest it. There's so much power when you have earnings reinvested. So that's it for now. Thank you so much, Jericho Go, for joining us. And to everyone, I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon and God bless you all.